<clears throat> Hi, and welcome to video four. Today we are going to talk about cardiac output. Okay, thank you for the music. Anyway, so let's get on to it. Want me to pull up my little lesson here? Simply, cardiac output is your heart rate times your stroke volume, okay? So we all kind of have an idea of what heart rate is, but what's stroke volume? So here's a little anatomical description or drawing of a heart. It's not world-class quality by any means, but it gets the job done. So I've depicted here kind of the anatomical layout of the heart. Up here, you have your two atria, right, left, two ventricles, right, left. So it's actually the left side of the heart that we really wanna pay attention to. The left side is responsible for pumping blood into most of the organs and muscles in the body. This chamber up here collects blood and filters or pumps the blood actually into this chamber here, which is called the left ventricle. Okay, this is a little bit of a tangent but whenever you're in a doctor's office and they take your blood pressure, the top and usually what's called the top number and the bottom number is referred to as systole and diastole respectively. So systolic pressure or systole is a measurement of the resistance to flow once the left ventricle ejects blood from its chamber into circulation. A higher number, an elevated number, represents an issue with this part of the heart, okay? A elevated bottom number represents an issue with atrial filling. And any change in those numbers, any deviation from quote unquote normal issues, a cardiologist will look at that and know exactly what's going on. So a little FYI, but anyway, back to cardiac output. Cardiac output is the multiplication of two variables. One, heart rate, two, stroke volume. Heart rate is very obvious. Heart rate in this situation would be, let's take a resting heart rate for instance. Let's say this person is tremendously fit and let's say a resting heart rate of 51, okay? Stroke volume at rest, I can't recall a number offhand, but let's just throw a number out there. Let's say 140, okay? This is measured in beats per minute. This is measured in flow milliliters per minute. Okay, milliliters of blood, right? When you multiply these two numbers together, you'll get a larger number, and that is actually a rate of cardiac output uh, usually measured in, I forget offhand the units, but basically it's heart rate multiplied beats per minute times milliliters per minute. It gives you a measurement of flow per beat or per minute relative to a certain heart rate. So one last thing here that I want to go over to make it as simple as we can. I just want to emphasize that fit people do have more efficient hearts. And the reason that is, is when you exercise on a regular basis, the cardiac muscle inside the heart actually increases. It, or not doesn't increase, I'm sorry, but enlarges. A larger heart is a stronger heart and thus is a more efficient pump, right? So one of the key things we need to get across right now is that if two people are actually exercising at the same intensity, Let's say that both people are jogging at six miles per hour, okay? Don't worry about any of the other factors. Don't worry about age. Don't worry about anything else, okay? Relative, that I should say, the intensity is absolute between both of them, okay? What you should kind of intuitively guess at this point is that an unfit person will have a much more difficult time maintaining that workload, okay? So their heart rate, oh, let me actually get a pen here. So if we look at the two heart rates between the individuals, heart rate, heart rate, both heart rates are gonna be elevated. You're exercising, you're doing strenuous work, etc. What's really interesting though, is if you compare this fit person, this fit person's heart rate at that same speed of six mile per hour jogging to this unfit person who's jogging at the same speed, the fit person's heart rate will actually be lower Okay, while the unfits will be higher. 
Okay, why is that? Well, it's because their heart isn't as trained as well as this person's. Okay, it's not as strong as a pump. It's not as strong of a pump, and thus isn't more efficient. Okay, now here's the other variable that we were just talking about before on the previous slide, which is stroke volume. Right. Whenever you exercise, okay, the elevated heart rate leaves. What, well, one of the big theories is that the reason that stroke volume actually decreases as the heart rate is increased. And just don't get confused by this. Even though there's a down arrow here, let's let's use this person, the unfit. Okay. The reason that stroke volume actually decreases, or the amount of blood that leaves the heart every time it beats is simply because there's less time for the, the ventricle to fill up with blood. Okay. What's interesting though is that because the fit person has a slightly lower heart rate or a couple of beats or maybe in 5, 10, 15 beats per minute less, that allows more time for the heart to actually, the left ventricle to actually fill with more blood. So they actually pump more blood every time the heart beats with that slight delay in heart rate or that slight decrease in heart rate that allows a slightly longer time for filling thus they have an advantage clearly over the unfit person they can carry out the same intensity either longer or they can actually increase the intensity at the same workload this person is working at that's one of the key advantages to having a strong heart is that a strong heart is a more efficient heart and a more efficient heart can last longer that's really all I want to say about this today. Thank you for your time. Please post comments or questions if you have any, and I hope to see you again next time. Thanks.